Hi Fiber family, it's Allison Hi. from Crochet Connections and today this is what we're making. It's the long awaited large uh, crochet granny square heart or granny heart square, whatever you want to call it. Um, the colour block granny square heart um, using two colours, the standard cluster um, with the three trebles and about in this one I have just run the colours so yeah uh, for this project we are going to need obviously two colours of yarn a crochet hook I've used a five millimeter that is um, what best suited this yarn so uh, have a look on your yarn label and see what best suits your yarn uh, some stitch markers, you can't really see these, these are bobby pins that I prefer to use. Possibly some scissors, depends on if you're going to uh, run your yarn or cut it off and tie it on. As I said for this one I just ran the yarn. Um, and very handy, a notepad and a pencil. I would really suggest um, writing down the instructions and yeah I think if I remember I'm going to put something some written instructions in here somewhere when I edit it um, I may I think I forgot to mention that in the end I do go over it but um, I didn't mention putting it in the video so um, I know this is a very long video and I wanted to try and make it shorter but that just didn't work so I will try to get this out of the way um, and I probably have not made this the easiest video to follow because I wanted to try and um, give you as much information as possible as usual. Sorry about that. So you know please, please contact me um, on YouTube here or my blog Crochet Connections at WordPress. Um, or I think I'm still on Google Plus, but I don't really go there anymore. I'm on Instagram at crochet connect uh, crochet underscore connections. Um, I am on there quite a bit. Uh, or you can email me um, crochet connections at gmail .com. And yes, okay. Let's get started on this lovely granny square. Okay so I have my square here and I have uh, just started my round seven. Um, I've done the corner and my first cluster and um, I haven't decided whether I'm going to do um, my two um, corners before I start my um, colour clusters or if I'm going to do corner, colour clusters and corner. Um, when I say that, that means that the points will be up the top. Um, when I made this one, I started with my corner, then my two colour clusters, and then my corner again. So I started here and went around this way. Um, I think I might do that again. So when I work around the square, it will be a start, colour cluster, colour cluster, a corner, and finish over here. So yeah. Um, now I said before about taking notes, I think. Um, so I just wrote it down here because um, I mentioned in previous videos that I found the picture um, and the lady's name was Beth. The, the only picture I've been able to find the original large heart square. Um, I haven't been able to find down or contact her in any way so if Beth if you are out there and you do see this video I just um, counted basically <laughs> so all credit goes to Beth um, basically I sat there and I counted from corner down until I saw where the first color cluster was in the corner which was down here and you start your first color clusters in an odd round. 
In my case, that's going to be on the seventh round. So there is six rows of yellow. So this is six, and this is row seven. So here I've got my um, first stitch marker. And that's going to be a green, have green. Um, that's going to be a green corner, a green corner. Then up the top here in the center, the very center um, space, that's going to be a green cluster as well. And that is why you start on an odd round because you want to um, count one, two space, three space, and then an odd space in the middle. So yeah, okay, I'm just going to see if I can. Uh, sorry about that, I hope I fit a bit better in this space now. I had to move my camera the other day, so yeah. So I have extra bobby pins because you will need them um, if you choose to use bobby pins to mark out because in this one um, you will have two clusters and eventually after a while you will stop expanding here. Um, you will have colour clusters here and here up the top um, and I will try to remember to insert a picture, um, a still because I only use the free Microsoft video editing program. I don't have fancy editing stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. And, um, okay. I will go to here. I think um, for this, I'm not going to cut colors at the moment. I'm just going to um, basically run colors along. I don't think I'm going to do anything fancy by running them up the back of posts or anything. We'll see. We'll see how we go and how annoyed I get with the program. So yeah, um, the seventh round it's got here, um, you colour on the two corners and in the centre and then it says the last um, side colour row is row 11. So I think that means the um, when you go out the last colour, the V is row 11, so we get to row 11 and then there's no more going diagonal this way or this way. But yeah, I do have a picture on the computer which I will pull up to make sure I'm doing it correctly. But at the moment we're only doing little ones and up here. Okay, so um, I'll cut the camera because I don't need it for the moment. and. Um, I'll put the camera back on when I'm down around here, okay? So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I just did a little double checking with the picture on my computer and um, I just cleared up my notes. Um, so yeah, you start your second colour in my case, that's green on the seventh round, which will be the corners and the um, centre. Um, and I said on row 11, um, the last side colour is on row 11 and I meant the yellow so after row 11 um, there will be no more yellow on the sides so um, row 11 yellow, row 12 green going off the sides um, and on the top um, the peak points up here row 11 equals um, one yellow cluster five green clusters, one yellow cluster, and obviously green on either sides. And I'm guessing there should only be, um, well it doesn't really matter because we'll be going down um, the V down here. And it'll just automatically do it itself, so we won't have to worry about that. So yeah, I just thought I would double check and make my notes a bit clearer because you know when you write your notes the first time, oh it makes sense and then you come back to it a week or two weeks later and you're like, oh what was I thinking? <laughs> I should um, print out the photo and put it in my big A4 book and make the notes. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd do that before I came back to my row. Okay. Okay, so um, I've done my first corner, so when we finish the square, the two peaks of the heart will be up here, the bottom V will be down here, and obviously the rounded sides will be over here even though they'll sit flat. So I'm bound to do my first colour cluster here, um, and I am about to, I've done my two, um, first two treble crochets into 
um, the chain space and I'll zoom in. Okay, and I'm going to change colors here. So I've yarned over and pulled through the first two loops and I'm going to grab my second color. Excuse me. Okay, so once again you um, have your two loops. I'm just going to hook the yarn over. I'm going to pull through the top first two loops. So it's as if I'm finishing the stitch regularly, but I'm just finishing it with um, the green yarn. And um, later on I'll come back and I'll be able to tie those tails off if I want. But for now I'm just going to chain one. And I might actually pull that tight because it will stay there um, and that will be fine like that so as you can see there is the I'll loosen that off one two three and then there is our chain one even though it is a bit um, small at the moment it won't matter okay so um, I'm just going to crochet over the tail, the yellow tail, and take my stitch marker out. So we're going to do uh, three trebles, chain three, and then three trebles. Still working over that yellow tail. Um, so this is the yarn I used for doing uh, the Granny Square video, just the basic beginning of Granny Square. And when I did the color changing round, and like I said, I did I just pulled out that round and I rewound it um, on if you go back to my um, YouTube page you'll be able to see how to make a center pull ball and that's all I've done here see center pull ball so I'm not wasting any yarn because as you know I hate wasting yarn <laughs> um, yes yeah, so I've this time I've finished the stitch and I'm just going to pick up, see I haven't done anything with that stitch, I'm just picking it straight up and I'm going to uh, just drop the green, pull it tight, chain one, yarn over, and I think I might yarn over it just once to keep it in place. See? That's what I mean about um, diagonals when you're running colours. Sorry I'm out of space again. Can you see how it um, is diagonal there? Okay. So we're just going to continue across. And I may just fast forward this. Okay, so this will be our last um, cluster before we get to our next colour cluster and I'm just going to do the same thing three trebles two 
And I'm going to do the same color changing method. I'm just going to pull it through the last stitch. I'm just going to make sure that's not too tight. And I'm going to chain one. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to continue with the um, color changing method of changing in the last two loops. So I'll do that again. So I just pulled out that last stitch. So I'm going to start as a regular treble, yarn over. Um, so notice how I have um, worked over the tail up until the moment, so I'm going to pull that to the side. I'm not going to work over the tail now. So I've yarned over, going into my chain space, getting rid of the tail, pulling up a loop. I have two, uh, three loops, sorry. I'm going to yarn over, pull through two. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that green tail, find my yellow tail, yarn over, pull through the last two loops. I'm going to tension that green tail. Pick up my yellow and chain one. Okay. And now I'm just going to completely forget about that green because it will end up over here. So it will go diagonal. Okay, so I'm going to just do the standard uh, cluster stitches all the way around. And obviously you don't need to see all of this, so I will um, come back when I've gotten to my next colour change. So as you can see I've got two colour clusters and I'll come back when I'm up here to do my next colour change. Okay so I am back and I'm about to do my centre colour uh, cluster. So we're going to do the stand, my standard colour change, um, starting off with a regular treble, yarning over, pulling through two, picking up our new colour. Now remember, it's attached all the way down here and we're colour changing up here. So you don't want it to be too tight, so you don't want to pull it like this. I'm going to leave it with a little bit of tension but not over the top. So I'll just pull it, fold it. And just you know pull it and then chain one and when I did that chain one I was holding the back I'll zoom in again I was holding the back um, stitches like this with my middle finger and my thumb so that I wasn't pulling on this yarn so that it would stay, you know, reasonably loose. Um, and once again, I won't be keeping this huge granny square. This is just for demonstration pro purposes. <laughs> Processes. Ugh, words, Alison, words. Okay. Not too far. One a little bit further in. Okay, so we only want one colour cluster. So, um, we do the standard yarn over, go into the space, and we're only going to do, you know, just one cluster. Uh, need more green yarn. Mm. 
not working over the yellow going through to switching colors and going to green pulling the green tight leaving the green down because once again it will come down here so, and as the rounds get bigger the distance here will get shorter and it will start doing this so chain one if you really wanted to you could uh, you know make smaller balls and um, cut off after every round like you could make small balls like this um, and then do little sections cut off and tie off cut off and tie off um, or you could just keep one little ball for each colour cluster like you had one one two and three um, yeah if I was going to uh, make this for someone I'm possibly I don't know I've never tried it I'd possibly consider doing that because I think that would probably make the most sense okay so we're going to chain one and slip stitch to our chainless starting stitch I think I've gone through too many there there we go loosening that stitch up and then going through it okay there is our first round of color clusters okay um, so that's round seven round eight you will build on these two rows here so you'll have two more clusters going into these chain spaces and these chain spaces these ones so um, they will grow me, this way and this way so this way and this way and as you can see it forms a V and it will do the same thing here except for it will um, go out this way and it will ultimately decrease the yellow but increase the green so I won't um, I'll complete around then come back and show you what I mean and I might even take a still and um, yeah we'll see how that goes okay So this is round eight. As you can see, we before we only had these two um, clusters here. And back over here. Um, yeah, we only had these two clusters here. I do have a second light on, but it doesn't seem to be helping with the shadows. Um, yeah, just these two where my fingers are but now as you can see with the extra round we have two more on the outside so that's what I mean by saying the diagonal and when I lay it flat you can see that a V is starting to form and it's going diagonal inwards and um, the opposite is happening up the top a V is the diagonal is happening outwards so before we had just one cluster color cluster just this one here where my finger is and now we have these two here they, and that will happen with each round that happens um, see as you can see with the two spaces here we get these clusters here and now the spaces beside it and that'll keep happening 
with each round until um, my notes over here said um, peak points row 11 uh, five green clusters between so um, so I'll have five clusters like this so there's two then there'll be three four and five and that will be the last um, row of any working colour changes up here. So yeah. I mean when you get the hang of it, uh, I'm making it sound more complicated than it actually is um, because I want to try and give you as much information and detail and technique as possible but it's like the the smaller granny hearts like once you get oh, excuse me once once you get the hang of these it's like bang 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 you just do it you're done you know what you're doing so yeah okay I'm gonna do a couple of rounds maybe two or three rounds so you'll see the bigger difference um, so I've taken a photo of round seven um, and I will do a couple more rounds and then compare photos of round seven and whatever round I get up to okay so basically all it is is um, let's zoom out um, all it is is working your rounds and doing a cluster color changing making or starting a color cluster one um, space a chain space, sorry, um, out each time and ending over so the cluster gets bigger. So it's probably the simplest way to describe it. You want your colour cluster to get bigger and your yellow or your main colour to get smaller. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'll go and do all that and I'll be back momentarily. For me, it'll be a while, but for you, it'll be a second. Okay, so I'm back and I've just completed row 9. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And um, I said before about the peaks up here, um, the yellow peaks finish on row 11. But what I forgot to mention was in order to form those peaks, at some point, um, for example, I'm just going to fold this over, see how if you pretend this is row 11 you'll have your last yellow and obviously this will all be green you've got to incorporate the green over here somewhere so I'm going to zoom in um, you've got to incorporate the green over here somewhere so row 10 is actually where you start incorporating the green on these corners um, and that will start giving you the um, peak to do that here because we've got um, three color cluster three then it'll go four and five and um, by that time um, so that's color cluster four color cluster five and um, yeah it'll be something like this so yeah this is what it looks like at the moment Uh, yeah, so as you can see I've just done one more round. I was going to try and do a couple more rounds to show you the expansion and I actually did. I got almost all the way around and then I thought, hang on, I'm missing something. <laughs> and um, I did this exactly the same thing as I did when I did the heart the first time. I forgot to factor in the, the sides and I was like, you idiot. I was on autopilot so don't do what I did um, that's where the stitch markers which I've actually put away come in handy so yeah I had to have them out and I actually forgot to write down in my notes when to change the corner of the colors so I think I will take a picture of this heart um, and I can actually write on the picture you know uh, how many rows like and I'll write round nine uh, first cluster here or round seven and I actually write on the picture 
um, so that it will, I can just look at it and go, oh, okay, instead of having to sit here and go one, two, three, four, three, four, three so on and so forth. Okay, so um, I'm going to um, I've got my last um, got my last slip stitch in, and as you can see, I've still I'll show you the um, so far. This is what the back of it looks like with just running the colours. So yeah, that's what I meant in the previous um, square when we did this one, I said about running colours. Um, some of them, you know, I've just crocheted over like up here um, because it was just going straight lines, but these ones, I'm um, just, yeah. If I was doing this for myself, as I said, I would um, cut. Okay. So pulling this down, I've got my slip stitch. And pull my green over. So once again, just coming through the back. And this is not being tightened, it's all loose. The good thing is you can just give it a slight pull. Okay. Now I'm going to pull on the yellow tail to tighten it. And I think I'm going to slip stitch the green anyway. And I will pull on that green tail. That green up there is very distracting. <laughs> um, just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to do my chainless starting. And I'm just completely ignoring that chain one that I did to hold it into place because overall you won't really notice it. And we're just doing a standard corner. So three trebles, chain three, three trebles, okay so I crocheted over that all of those stitches, I'm leaving it out for the last one because I'm colour changing that over there and once again I'm yarning sorry yarning over going in pulling up a loop pull through two dropping that color hitting my yellow pulling through two tightening the green chaining one with my yellow and I think I will just I'll chain over I mean I'll crochet over the first uh, cluster or chain over. Uh, excuse me, I can't get my words out. I will uh, use the cluster to secure the first chain space and then it won't matter really. So, the only thing you have to be wary of when you're running colours is that yarn gets tangled. See it's all over the place. And there is a way to deal with that and I will show you when I get back down to this side. I'm just going to put that behind because I don't want that in front otherwise it will be stuck there. Ooh helps if you do the right stitch. The other thing um, with running colours is it gets caught up on everything so easy so that is another reason I'd suggest um, cutting off and weaving in ends sort of thing. 
but that's just my personal opinion. Um, yeah. I am a bit OCD, so you know how it goes. Everyone has their own ways and means of doing things. Okay, so last yellow cluster before we change colours. And when I get down to this corner, okay, so chain, pull through two. Now to prevent this, see if I was to pick this up like I normally would, can you see here the yarn is getting crossed? Because normally you just pick up this over here, but what you want to do is pull the yellow over the back. So yes, it is crossed, but you're picking the green up from the bottom. So you're picking the green up from the bottom. In my case, your case, it might be over the top. So you can pull this yarn over the front and out of the way. You can do whatever you want with it, however works best for you. Okay. Just tension that out a bit. Okay, chain one, tension that. And see now that's all separate, there is no, you know, um, link, crossover, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and I can pull my yellow yarn to back over to my left because I am right handed. Um, and I can just tack it down with a stitch and I'm only going to tack it down with one stitch because it is going to run diagonal and that will also give it um, enough um, flexibility to you know pull through if I need to loosen it or tighten it later on So it's the first cluster, chain three. Pull it up, get that out of the way. Okay, so this is the square. As you can see, just with that little bit of green here. It's already started to cut the corner, um, even though there's no yellow here, but if you can see what it, just cutting off that chain is done. It's really started to shape it, um, compared to over here, where it's just, you know, block like this. It's just a standard block, whereas this side it looks more diagonal. Um, and You've just got to watch now that you want to leave four um, yellow clusters. So if you come next time and do the chain, not the chain, the colour clusters here. So you'll do a green here and a green here. to mark it off. <laughs> green and green. Um, and that will leave one, two, three, four yellows. So then in the next round you will just do a complete green around this section. But obviously I don't know what will be happening up here because I can't see it at the moment. Um, yeah, so you just do it like that. And I might actually leave... no I don't need them yet. They're there yet. <laughs> Okay, so um, on this part we have two clusters here and we have two yellow clusters which means we're almost to the bottom of the part. So yeah. I mean it does work out pretty quickly. So, yeah. hmm. Oh, I almost matched. You know, sort of. 
Well, in real life it looks like a bit of match. Anywho, okay. Okay, so I've um, completed a few more, well, I think another round. I've just completed this round here. Um, and what I've done is, because um, my battery died, I went and completed partially the next round. So what's this? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Partially on round 11. Um, I'll turn it. So I won't see. This is where I started. Um, this corner and you can see the peaks are starting to sh take shape um, with the bees here now. Um, one, two, three, four. We don't want to have any more yellow here. So um, for the next round we will um, just do green but we won't go into that yet. On this side um, we will do our green colour change um, so in the next two and then we will leave that we will do um, one more yellow up here so we'll have the two the green clusters here and here on the two sides so there um, and down the bottom we've already finished the V so as you can see here um, we've, I've just finished the V here now as you can see I've started at this corner I've gone down and halfway around um, and basically it's just still the same typical granny square just clusters changing colors clusters all that it's doing is with each round you'll see the heart start to take shape and just like I said the color clusters growing each um, yeah I can, I'm going to zoom in a little bit as you can see this is the down the bottom here um, the color clusters has expanded over this side compared to this side and yeah there's not really all that much difference you can just um, yeah as I said we've got two yellow clusters here and when we finish this current round with this corner um, we will have one yellow cluster here and then um, after this round here it will just be green up here um, so yeah that's when on my notes it says five colored clusters between each peak so all the way over here it will have yellow one, two, three, four, five, yellow, and then obviously the green over here. So yeah, and um, we have the green here, and at the moment we have the five color clusters on the side. We will have a green and um, a green here, and that will leave us one, two, three, four, yellow, and in this round, um, that's when we do the green. The following round after that it will be completely um, green after. Um, sounds confusing at the moment because you can't exactly visualize it and I'm just blah 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 in at the moment. Okay so um, as I said I just did the color change and as you can see it's just like the expansion of the um, color change the what do you call it <laughs> the chain spaces it's just yeah you see the where it's joined the color change jo the color change and you know you've got to do another one in there so you just get your in my case green and you just go around so we'll continue doing that video I've been playing with the um, the tripod and sometimes it goes up sometimes it goes down um, yeah zooming in and out obviously um, I've been playing with the leg positions and the height of the tripod so trying to get the best 
um, for when I zoom in and out. So it's it, when I'm um, sitting here, the best like position for my hand. So trying to keep it in frame. And I said mentioned that you know I should put some tape down, and I've actually got two pieces of tape here and here, so I can try and you know keep myself a bit centered, give me an idea of where to stay. <laughs> And it has been quite helpful. Don't always stay there, but you know, I'm gonna tighten that chain one a bit. Has been quite helpful. Yeah. I was a bit afraid that the um, light might reflect off these two pieces of tape, but I can't really. Oh, there we go. Normally, you can only just see it if you look hard, so that's not too bad. If you did see it and you're wondering what it was. That's what it is, pieces of the tape. Yes. I um the good thing about this too is if you wanted to make a for any square blanket, you can use this as a center or in some random spot because you can just join it to other granny squares. So yeah. You can um obviously if it's not um exactly it doesn't exactly fit to your you know if you've got granny squares that have only got four or something on it you can just add a row or whatever. And um yeah. Make sure it's not too tight. And you hold it at the back here, even though um, it may look loose. I'm you know, holding it while I'm pulling my green tight. I'm just getting rid of my green at the back and I'm still holding it while I tighten up this and I am um, the only issue I'm having is sometimes when I tighten the stitches they are pulling down as you can see the um, height with this one see how it I'll just use the green as a level so you can see that is straight across and there's a tiny little V going down. Can you see that? There's a tiny little V in there. It comes down. Okay. So I am going to yarn over this work. Oh, I'm doing it again. Not watching what I'm doing. Actually got it in the right spot and I'm actually leaving it out I'm not actually
crocheting over it for the bottom of this stitch. I haven't been doing that for these stitches. So again, holding it, and then it's actually in the right spot. <sighs> Gotta pay attention, Alison. And this time I am yarning over it in the right place. Yeah, and they she does them in both um, like English, Australian terms and US terms. So yeah, and they're great patterns. Um, I've actually been a pattern tester for her for a while. So yeah. And I love her patterns. Um, and I wasn't paying attention again, so I'm going to pull that stitch out. Okay, so that's going underneath. And I'm just going to leave that stitch in there. Yarn through two. See how I didn't um, yarn over in the last stitch? I don't know if you can see that. I'll turn this light on. Does that make any difference? It's got a bit of a yellow light in it. Mm, probably not. But um, yeah here because I didn't yeah okay chain one once again I'm just going straight across because there's only one cluster of yellow we're coming to the peak two Moving the green tail aside so it doesn't show through. Moving the green back. Tightening the yellow. Chain one with the green. And I'm just laying the yellow down. And working over the yellow tail with the green. So now there'll be five clusters of green. One, two, three, four, five one yellow and then another green before we um, connect so yeah one um, one two three four five one yellow and one green and we connect and then onto the corner again I wouldn't say freak out but I had a mini moment there I'm like why why because as as you can see there's a yellow you see that little line there? There's a yellow um, strand from the row below. And I was like, what? Why isn't it? Why isn't it working? <laughs> Did I miss it? That my strand is actually up here. I'm like, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four, yep. So we'll be doing completely green down this side now. Make sure we've got the right colour. Chain one. And I put a stitch marker in because um, the yarn up here was a bit splitty and I didn't want to spend forever trying to get my hook in. So I'll just let them do it and it'll be fine. Okay, slip stitching over. I mean you could just totally finish off here. I mean you don't have to see so my yarn just split a bit there. You don't even have to um, see if I can get this all in the screen. You can totally finish it there and it is done. And take a snap. 
So, um, okay, so you can just leave it there as you can see the heart shape, but I prefer to do one more round of my color cluster color. So I will do that. So it's just basically a round, standard round, no color changes of the green. And I think that finishes it off just nicely. So if you were going to do a granny blanket and you, you're not, if you were doing a planned granny blanket where you have, um, say, a design where you're doing squares and they're all edged in the same colour, then you would say, in my case, if I was edging them all in green, then I would do one more border in the green. Or if I was doing the edges in white, then I would use my colour cluster as white. Um, and it would blend perfectly, you know. So yeah, and you'll see in the picture that I've added that that's what the people have done. You'll have to look really, really carefully because um, it's quite hard to see. But on the edges you can just see that Beth has got um, the red with a white, white-ish background, but in the next picture just slightly on the edge there's a very pale pinkish background and it's sort of joined together so yes okay so I'll do the last round and then we'll come back so this is the finished square as you can see with the, um, the green on the outside I think it really gives it that extra um, shaping effect when you turn it around so it's actually facing you it looks a lot better <laughs> um, it gives it a more rounded effect I mean it's never going to be fully rounded because it is a square and you know you've got the, the cluster shapes um, but I think it's quite interesting it's quite an interesting feature and um, you will depending on the colors you use get like colors poking through if you don't cut them um, and tie them off if you're going to use it as a cushion cover or something uh, but you know I'll show you the back um, this is what it looks like if you're running colors um, these ones down here aren't too bad, but um, obviously at the beginning, this is what it looks like. We get so uh, yeah, like um, a um, sewing cotton or something, and you could just tack this down every now and again if you had the energy. You could just go along, and you know, if you wanted to. But I honestly don't have the energy. I just cut it <laughs> and reattach it but that's just me so that's what this looks like from the back and the front it is very pretty um, and myself if I was just going to continue with two colors I'd probably do um, two rows so I'd probably do another row of this green and then I'd probably see how it looked after the second row with yellow. I might even do three rows before I did yellow. And then I'd probably do two yellow, two green, two yellow. Or I might just continue with one colour. Yeah. So it would look, I think it would look fast, fantastic with a solid heart. And then just using scraps on the outside for, you know, the colour clusters. Yeah. Anywho, so now, as usual, I'm about to go and film the introduction, now that I have my finished project. Uh, and I will try to remember to add pictures, and the, if I, um, I don't think I've seen the chart for this, so I'll just try to remember to add in pictures. Um, I'll try to find the website that I found the original picture on. I will try to remember to add in the picture I found on Google from, that Beth has made. I'm not 
um, saying Beth's last name because I think that would be an invasion of privacy. But if you follow, if I remember to put the um, link to the website in, you can go there and have a look yourself. So, yes. Um, and like I said, Beth, if you see this, you can contact me or you can say, hey, I did it. Um, that's up to you, but I do not want to um, put Beth's information all over the internet without her permission and I have not been able to contact her, so that is up to Beth. Okay, and I'm sorry once again for such a long-winded video. I do want to try and make these videos more economical, but I'm just a long-winded person, it appears. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to finish this here, um, then go do the introduction, and remember, fiber the family. You know, crochet is subjective, and we don't make mistakes, we make variations, and... Up, up, and crochet! Later, alligators!